Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Gloria Day. My name is Martin Corns. I'm the pastor here at Gloria Day. Welcome also to those who are watching online as well. Great to have everybody here with us. It was interesting, on Thursday we had quite a number of people and uh, I think everybody's filled up with the turkey and they're too busy with the, the Christmas, uh, the, the Thanksgiving sales uh, at the moment. But I'm glad everybody's made it along. I was a bit worried it's going to be cold today. Are you cold in here? This morning it was a bit chilly, but that's just, that's just me, you see. I'm too... It warms your heart when you come to church. Thanks for laying like that. Just a couple of announcements, and, uh, and then we'll move on with our service. Out in the lobby area, you may have seen the Christmas tree there, uh, and underneath it there may have even been some gifts. What we do is we collect up gifts, and now's a great time to go along to Target or wherever and get some gifts in the sales. And you can be like, oh, I can go and like, shop for presents again and uh, pop them under the tree. They go to uh, the Salvation Army, who then uh, distribute those gifts to uh, children right here in uh, Nordies. A uh, couple of other items. On Wednesday, we carry on with our Bible study. That's at 2 and 5.30. We have a short service and then a Bible study. We're not going through Mark as we go uh, through December. We're going back to The Chosen. If you watch The Chosen, uh, you'll realize it's, it's quite an amazing series looking at the life of Jesus. And I think they're hoping to do about eight series. It's free, you just Google The Chosen, and then you'll see that. You can actually buy the DVDs as well. Uh, and if you've got Peacock or Xfinity, uh, they're playing uh, season one. We're gonna be watching those on Wednesdays and then having a short discussion about them afterwards. Uh, so that would be good. Come and join us for that. Uh, just a couple of other things. Inside the middle of the bulletin, because today is the first Sunday in Advent, we're going to be thinking about our Advent wreath later on. Inside the bulletin, there's a, like an insert that's in there. And uh, I know it said kids in the divine service, but we're all big kids, okay? And this just gives you some information about what Advent is. So we're going to be looking more at that in our service because you know we have an advent wreath and we do these candles and we do this stuff but really what's it about so we'll be talking about that uh, later on and um at the back of church if it's something that you want uh they've got uh, we put here it's devotionals that go through the season of advent advent as we count down to the coming of jesus uh, and if that's something you want day for day bible verses for the day grab one of those uh, they're at the back. Uh, this Wednesday, we're going to be decorating the church. If you're not at work, uh, you want to come join us from 9 o'clock in the morning. This is, I'm going to be a bit later, but that's fine. Uh, and uh, lunch is going to be provided. Thanks, Tom, for that. Tom's putting some lunch on. Appreciate that. I think he's going to have the, the grill going outside, Tom. Is that right? And uh, <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> but we definitely get some lunch. Uh, and uh, sign up to put purchase a poinsettia um, we've got those some of those in church would just be great to have the front of church filled up with those wonderful red uh, plants as we uh, come to the Christmas uh, season we're going to start our service just uh, in a moment with a time of quiet as we recognize we come into the Lord's house uh, and then uh, Lisa's going to come and bring us uh, a song which will again just uh, help us to focus so will you join me as we just quiet for a moment? As we come into God's house, we remember that uh, he is here with us. He's come to bring us hope in our lives and through our lives to other people. We've come to meet with the Lord God in sacrament, in his word. We've come to bring our prayers, our needs and our thoughts to him. So, Father God, as we gather here today, we pray, Father God, for an outpouring of your Holy Spirit upon this place. Lord God, that you may speak to us through your word, through these gifts that you're going to bless us with. And Lord God, that you may, be, may encourage us, show us that there is hope in you. And Lord God, equip us and send us out as we serve you this week. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. And our worship this morning begins in the way our lives in Christ in baptism began. In the name of God the Father, and God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. 
Let's listen to the song that Lisa's going to bring us. Here in this place, new light is streaming. Now is the darkness vanished away. See in this space, our fears and our dreamings brought here to you in the light of this day. Gather us in the lost and forsaken. Gather us in the blind and the lame call to us now and we shall awaken we shall arise at the sound of our name we are the young our lives are a mystery we are the old who yearn for your face we have been sung throughout all of history, called to be light to the whole human race. Gather us in the rich and the haughty, gather us in the proud and the strong. Give us a heart so meek and so lowly, give us the courage to enter the song. Here we will take the wine and the water, here we will take the bread of new birth. Here you shall call your sons and your daughters, call us anew to be salt for the earth. Give us to drink the wine of compassion, Give us to eat the bread that is you. Nourish us well and teach us to fashion lives that are holy and hearts that are true. Not in the dark of buildings confining, not in some heaven light years away. Here in this place the new light is shining, now is the kingdom and now is the day. Gather us in and hold us forever. Gather us in and make us your own. Gather us in, all peoples together. Fire of love in our flesh and our bone. Thank you, Lisa and Angie. The birth of a child is a reason for a family gathering. The birth of Christ's child caused many to gather that first Christmas. Angel, shepherd, magi. And the birth of Christ still causes families all over the world to gather with each other. Our gatherings are going to be challenged this year. Many of them may not happen at all. Well, let's use this year to recognize what God does through the gathering of his people. And let's begin this day the way God begins his life in us and through the gift of baptism. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. There's a video on the screen, then we're going to light our Advent candle. <laughs>
we light the first candle on our Advent wreath. And we're going to think a little bit more about that later on. If for you, maybe you're wondering what that is all about. <coughs> so there are some words on the screen. I'm going to read the P parts. If you join me with the C. God calls, gathers, enlightens and sanctifies. And he promises us. For where there two, two or three, three gather in my name, name. There, there I am I with them. them. The writer to the Hebrews encourages us to gather together to support and encourage each other. And let us, let us consider, consider how to stir up, up one another to love, love and good, good works, works not, not neglecting, neglecting to meet together, as, as in the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day drawing near. Advent reminds us that we look forward with hope to another greater gathering. And he will send his angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of the heavens. Life with Jesus is a life of hope. And we come now, as we do in the start of our service, to recognize that as we come to this God of hope, the hope he gives us is that salvation, that redemption, that saving from those sins in our life. And that guilt, that weight, that burden that we carry around. That as we come to the cross, we can know that lifted of us. That hope that we can experience in Christ. Just invite you for a moment as you come before the Lord to recognize that we are indeed sinners. And bring to him those things that are on your mind, that God places on your mind now. That you know that where you've fallen short of God's glory in your life. Let's be quiet for a moment. We started out talking about gathering and then we lit the candle of hope. I'm hearing these words used together a lot this year. I hope we can gather as a family for Christmas. I hope we can gather as a church at Christmas. I hope we can too. But whether we can or not, that doesn't change the reality that God gathers with his people, no matter the number or the circumstance. We easily lose sight of that when our traditions are threatened. We take our focus off the reason for gathering and put it on the gathering itself or the circumstances that threatens our gathering. The reason for the gathering is Jesus. To forget that <coughs> is unholy. Let's take a moment to confess our need for forgiveness. Gracious God, you are Lord, the, the most, most important, important thing in our lives, Lord. Lord. The birth of Jesus is the most important thing about Christmas. We sometimes overlook that holy fact and put our own needs or our own plans ahead of yours. We put our hope in the wrong place and we lose it. Forgive us, Lord, for Jesus' sake, and redirect our hearts and our hope to the holy reality of your place in our lives. In the name of Jesus, Amen. And brothers and sisters, hear these words of hope. That it is indeed because of Jesus Christ who came as a baby, who grew up into a man, who died on a cross for each one of us, who came back to life again, so that we may know forgiveness and may know eternal hope with him. May you hear these words today, that your sins are forgiven. In the name of God the Father, and God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We're going to sing our first hymn, Prepare the Royal Highway. If you're able to, please stand with me as we sing together. <coughs>
are told in sacred story. Hosanna to the Lord, for he fulfills God's word. God's people see him coming, your own eternal King. Palm branches strew before him, spread garments, shout and sing. shall doubt assail you, Hosanna to the Lord, for he fulfills God's word. His is not earthly kingdom, it comes from heaven above. His rule is peace and freedom. And justice, truth, and love. So let your praise be sounding for kindness so abounding. Hosanna to the Lord, for He fulfills God's word. Please take your seats a moment. Carmen's going to bring us our first two readings. Our Old Testament reading is a prophecy from Isaiah 700 years before the birth of Christ. And Isaiah has been given this message from God. God's people who are in despair. But it's a message of hope and of comfort. And then we're going to move on to a reading from Paul, 2 Corinthians, where Paul also looks to the future hope of Christ's second coming. Thanks, Carmen. Comfort for God's people. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that her warfare is ended, that her iniquity is pardoned, that she received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries, in the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle lesson is from 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16 through 18. So we do not lose heart. Though our outer self is wasting away, our inner self is being renewed day by day. For this light mon momentary affliction is preparing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. As we look not to the things that are seen, but to the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are transient, but the things that are unseen are eternal. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Thanks, come. Did you see in that first uh, reading from Isaiah, we see the, it, again that the prophecy looking towards John the Baptist, the one who will be in the wilderness preparing the way of the Lord. But our gospel reading comes from Matthew chapter 1. Glory to you, O Lord. The birth of Jesus Christ. Now, the birth of Jesus Christ took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. And her husband Joseph, being a just man and unwilling to put her to shame, resolved to divorce her quietly. But as he considered these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. For he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. 
when Joseph woke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took his wife, but knew her not until she had given birth to a son. And he called his name Jesus. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Christ. For our message, we sing again, Hark the Glad Sound. If you're able to, please <coughs> join with me. hear our message. Will you join with me as we pray together? Father God, as we come to hear from you, I pray, Lord God, that you may speak to us through your word. You may give us ears to hear you, hearts open and receptive to receive your message. And Lord God, the feet to leave here and put what we've heard into practice. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So, you know, one thing that really still amazes me, I guess, being uh, here in America, uh, is comparing the lights around a house in England compared with a house in America. And, hey, I like it a lot. It just seems like so much more. <laughs> Maybe it's because we've got 240 volts in England and 120 volts here. Maybe it's because electricity is more expensive in England compared with here. I'm not quite sure what it is, but uh, people go, go all out. So if you walk around my neighborhood, heading up to Christmas, the trees, the houses are covered in lights. And of course, people put the lights on Thanksgiving, and they stay there till March or April time, just to give us a sense of uh, excitement, right? But question for you, have you got your lights up yet? Who's got your lights up outside your house yet? Angie, good job, good job. <laughs> You obviously had nothing else better to do, right? I mean, I'm getting there. I'm getting there on our house, but, but it's a slow process. And the question is, if I drove past your house, now I know you haven't got any lights on there, but if I drove past your house and it's not that bright, if other people pass by, would they understand, would they see as we come up to Christmas what the reason for the season is? As they walk past your apartment, your house, and just because if you live in an apartment, you've only got one front door, don't think you get away with it. Would people who walk past think, you know what? No, ah, Christmas, I get that. Christmas is such a great time of sharing the hope that we have in Jesus. And, and maybe we need to be spending some time just praying, God, help me to see how I can witness to you this Christmas time and not just this holiday time. 
But we, uh, we bought a Christmas wreath from a young man down the road. He sells them uh, for, to raise money for, for scouts. Well, I hope it's raised money for scouts and not himself. Um, and so that one went on the front door. We have a bigger one on the side of the house. That's a plastic one, but it's so high up that nobody will know <laughs> that, it's, uh, that it's plastic, which is great. Uh, and maybe you're going to get one. Maybe you're going to get one from the scouts. Maybe you're going to get one from uh, the store and, and put it up outside your house. And maybe it'll have a big red bow on it. And if you haven't got one, I'd invite you to get, I encourage you to get one. Actually, Advent wreaths are great, especially when you can talk about the meaning behind them to people. Martin Luther uh, actually encouraged families to observe this period of Advent that we're going through. A great time to teach our children, our grandchildren, about the coming of Christ. Which is why it's slightly weird that we had a Christmas reading this morning, but we're reminding ourselves of what we're thinking about over the next month. And now, of course, all around us, people are frantically getting ready for Christmas. I don't know how many of you, I'm not going to ask for a hands up, how many of you were out there uh, Friday morning, super early, Saturday, Sunday, well, today's Sunday, uh, out there in the, in the sales, buying all the stuff you need for Christmas, right? And I haven't given you my Christmas list yet, but I'll do that later on. And maybe you were out there putting out those lawn decorations, putting the lights up, waiting for the arrival of Santa Claus. And we do all that, and that's okay. But we also remember we're joining with people, with Christians across the world, who are preparing to celebrate this Christmas season together. So, another question for you. What do you know about the Advent wreath? And as I said, the big red bow around it. You know, we've got one up here. It's got the five candles on it and uh, some different colors to the candles. And, and actually, it matches uh, the, the colors in our church as well. But what's that all about? Is it just some funny church thing? Or is there some uh, message behind it? And, and we're going to focus on the Advent wreath over the next four weeks as we take a break from uh, looking at the Gospel of Mark. And we start with the word Advent. The word Advent is a Latin word. It means coming. So this period of Advent is this period of coming. The coming of Jesus into the flesh. And we also look at the second coming, when Christ will return as well. Now another thing I miss, I miss a lot of things at the minute, but one thing I miss, although my wife says she's going to put it up again, is Advent calendars. But Advent calendars with chocolate in them. That's a very important <laughs> part. I think once the kids grow up, you know, well, where's all the chocolate gone? But I saw the Hershey's Kisses out there. So maybe we're going to get that back. Advent candles, these different things that are used to count down to Christmas. And now the Advent wreath actually has its roots across the pond in England as well. And, and it goes all the way back to the time before Christ, B.C., which you're going to think, well, that's weird. How can it count down to Christmas? Well, well bear with me on this. As people in, in Europe, England, etc., went through winter, where the days are so much shorter than here, they would get to the middle point, the winter solstice, and they would be wanting that hope of the sun coming again. And so they would light fires and light candles. And so the early Christians, they took on these pagan practices as people became Christian. They didn't get rid of the practices, but they made them, if you like, Christian. And they started to, to light fires and light candles to prepare for the coming of the light, the sun, Jesus coming into our world. And then just a few centuries ago, it wasn't that long ago, 1839, there was this German pastor and he used to run this mission school for kids. And the kids kept asking him, well, when's Christmas? Is it Christmas yet? When's Christmas? You know. So what he did is he got this big uh, cartwheel and he put 28 candles in it. And hey, we know the rest of the story in a sense that they used to light a uh, candle, then one candle, then two candles as they counted down to the time of Christmas. Now, I think because of fire safety, we don't have 28 candles today. We've only got five, which is a bit of a shame, but um, that's how it goes. But we begin to see that over the period of time, this Advent wreath idea has developed 
But the important thing behind it is we're counting down to the coming of Jesus. And you've got this circle, and I think I've put some of that on the screen. You've got this circle because it's the, the circle of everlasting life, if you like. And it's green, it's evergreen. Show that Christ is always present. And you've got these different candles on them as well. And the big red bow. The red bow is often there to talk about Christ's blood. And the candles, the different colours. Uh, you've got the three blue or, or purple, and then the one pink and the one white. The blue, the purple, that's a royal colour. Because we're thinking about the coming of a king. The pink candle, the rose candle, because that's linked with the word joy when we come to the third week. And then the white candle, white for purity, will light that on Christmas Eve. Christ, who's come into our world, the light of the world. And uh, these candles actually have names. So if you saw on the screen on the video earlier, it talked about the shepherd. Because the first candle is often referred to as, as the shepherd. And then you've got prophecy, Bethlehem, you've got the angel candles. We're using a different uh, name as we go through. We're going to be talking about hope. And we're going to talk about peace. We're going to talk about joy. And we're going to talk about love. Four words, hope, joy, peace, love. Because four words that I just think our world is crying out for at the moment. So we're going to think about hope today. But again, a question for you. What are you hoping for this week? As you think about this week and the things you've got to be doing, what are you hoping for? <laughs> Maybe <laughs> you're hoping you haven't put on too much weight the next time you step on the scales. Maybe after all the family gatherings, you're hoping your family get along a bit better together. Maybe you're hoping for your health to improve. Or to get on better with work colleagues or people at college. Maybe you're hoping you've got enough to pay off those student loans. Or you've actually got enough time to do the college work and pass exams. Think about your life. What do you put your hope in? And you might say to me, well that's obvious, I put my hope in Jesus. People were asked in a survey, what do they put their hope and their trust in? 69% said they put their hope and their trust in their family. 34% said they put their hope in their career, in their job. 23%, which I'm surprised is lower, said they put their hope in money. Only 20% said they put their hope in, in faith. And then 19% said they put their hope in friends. Hope is such an important word, and especially relating to Christmas. Especially relating to the Advent season as we lead up to Christmas. And as I said, as we look around our world, I think there are many people in desperate need of hope. So much so that they try and get that hope in other ways. Or others have just given up hope. They've lost hope. They've given up trying to find something they can trust in. As I said, people might try and look for hope in something, something to fill the gap, something to fill the emptiness in their lives. And, and maybe if you put your hope in your career, maybe working harder at your career will bring hope. Maybe trying to change your eating or your exercise routine will bring a bit of hope next time you tread on the scales. And these are all good things to hope in. Of course, there are some things which aren't so good to hope in and trust our lives in. Things which we think might bring some meaning and some purpose, but actually are going to let us down. And if people are honest, they don't really work sometimes. And that stuff that we try and put our hope in, <coughs> there's still that emptiness. Our, our life is still missing something. And of course, sometimes those things can just make life so much worse. But the good news is that Christ came at Christmas to bring us hope. So I just want to quickly unpack this theme and, and have a look at it as we go back to uh, our readings and way back to the start of the Bible. Because right in the beginning, 
in Genesis, Adam and Eve, they disobeyed God in the Garden of Eden. And that human race was left without hope. But God appeared and God pronounced judgment on them. But at the same time, we have that word of hope in Genesis 3.15. I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers. He, he will crush your head and you will strike his heel. Right there at the beginning of the Bible, we see that ray of hope. Right there at the beginning, we are pointing already to Jesus who will come and crush Satan. And it gave people hope for what was to come as they went through the scriptures. And then a little bit later on, Genesis 12, God called Abraham. And God promised, if you remember, God promised Abraham that he would make Abraham into a great nation. And he would bless him. And he will make his name great. And God said, and you will be a blessing. And through the nation of Israel, God continued to give promises about this special individual, the Messiah, Jesus, who is to come, the light of the whole world, to bring hope to the whole world. And then through those young, long years of waiting, when the Israelites were taken into exile, those prophecies of hope came even more, even in their despair and in their struggling. And it became even more specific as well, focusing on the Messiah, the Saviour, who was to come. And then around, and we heard it in our reading, around the year 700 BC, the prophet Isaiah told the king of Judah, the Lord will give you a sign, the virgin will be with child, and will give birth to a son, and you will call him Emmanuel. Yeah, what incredibly clear prophecy, that there will be hope for all people. A baby who would be born to come and deliver the <coughs> people from their sin and bring them back to a relationship with the Lord God. And in our reading from Isaiah, we heard about that hope who would bring comfort to God's people. God said, comfort, comfort my people. And as we look around, we see <coughs> people are desperate for that comfort in their lives. And we can be the bringers of comfort to them as well. Comfort, comfort my people. God told Isaiah to tell his people. And how people need that hope and that comfort today as they face challenges, as we face challenges in our lives. And we call out to God for comfort for those who we watch slipping away. And heading towards despair in their life. People who just feel so alone. Or feel that like life is not worth living. <laughs> I want you to know that there is, a, there is hope in Jesus Christ. Whether, whether you're waiting on God's direction in your life. Uh, whether you're waiting for an answer to prayer. Whether you're longing for someone to feel better. For their health to improve. There is hope in Christ. And this candle of hope that we light reminds us of that. And then the Apostle Paul, we had that in our reading. What did Paul do when the going got tough for him? He had a hope for the future. Paul writes in 2 Corinthians 4, therefore we do not lose heart. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but what is unseen. It's a hope in Christ that helps us go the distance. <laughs> life has its ups and downs, not just for people out there, for us as well, right? <laughs> life has its ups and downs and sometimes we struggle with where our hope comes from. We all go through trials and challenges in our life. <laughs> it's so easy sometimes to get discouraged. And that's when it's so important to remember that God is with you. He is your hope. He is who you can trust in. And some of you here can testify to that, say, I was struggling and I kept my eyes on Jesus and I knew his hope walking through me through that challenging part in my life. God has got a purpose for you in your life and especially when you're going through those trials and those challenges that you face 
And we know that that hope one day will be that glory that will await us in heaven. But you can ask me, well, hang on a minute. Why do we need hope? Well, that's just a, a religious thing, right? Why, why can't we just go ahead with our lives, make the most of it, and, and get on with it, and make our own hope? Many people do, and they're, they're doing all right, aren't they? How do we know that waiting for God in our life to give us hope is actually going to be worth it? Just look at the Christmas story in a minute. It's full of examples of people who put their hope in Christ and weren't disappointed. Think about the Magi, the wise men, right? They travelled such a long distance to see Jesus. Imagine if they went all that distance, following that star, and then they turn up at the address the star's given them and find it's just a gas station instead. They would have been just a little bit disappointed. <laughs> but the hope was not disappointed. They turned up, they found Christ just as it had been prophesied. And what about Mary? Mary was told by the angel that she would give birth to a saviour and all the taboo that we talked about surrounding that. And, and those who have given birth, and, and I haven't, I'll just point that out, but those who have given birth will tell you that every pregnancy is a time of waiting and expectation and hope. And Mary's pregnancy was no different. And we're told that Mary pondered all these things in her heart. But imagine Mary standing at the foot of the cross. She's looking up at Jesus hanging there going, where is this hope? But Mary then went to the tomb and began to realize that Jesus had risen. And that was her hope. And then there was Simeon. Simeon was a man from Jerusalem, a priest, and he was waiting for the Messiah to come. And God told Simeon he would see the Messiah before he died. And at the precise moment when Joseph and Mary came in with their sacrifice into the temple, the Spirit moved Simeon to go into the temple and he would too put his, put his hope in Christ, in that child. And then there was the prophetess Anna. We read about her in Luke chapter 2. And, and Anna lost her husband maybe when she was quite young. And she lived many years as a widow. But she had put all her hope and trust in God. And every day she would go to the temple waiting for this hope to come. And when Christ came, she was not disappointed. Remember, the Advent season it, it is not just about those who waited for Christ's first coming either. It's about all of us who wait for Christ's second coming. When Christ returns and he will get rid of all evil in our world, he will make all things right. He will restore the earth and we'll see Christ face to face and our hopes will be fulfilled. When you put your hope in Christ, you will not be disappointed. If you put your hope in other things, in your bank balance, your possessions, in people, in your work life, in your future plans, your relationships, they are likely to disappoint you at times. But Jesus will never disappoint you. That hope in Christ, which is eternal. And that's the amazing message that, that this Advent wreath and the Christmas season brings to everyone. The message of hope for a lost world. Jesus has come to save us. He's come to save me. He's come to save you. Jesus was born into this world to grow as a man, to die on the cross, our sins so if you're discouraged at the minute or if you look around at other people and see them discouraged if you're tired of waiting if you feel like you're giving up if you see people at work or at college who just look like they're struggling with hope if people have faced too many disappointments in their life then let me point you and let you point them to Christ and the hope that is found in him alone. So may you know that there is hope which leads you through the struggles in your life. A hope which in Christ does not dis disappoint. And may you this Christmas time have opportunities to talk and share about that hope that you have. And may you know that there's a future hope in Jesus when one day he will draw all those who believe.
to himself. Will you pray with me? Father God, thank you that we can indeed know that hope that is in you, Jesus. We're sorry, Lord God, when we struggle with hope and trust. Lord God, renew that hope in you today. And Lord God, help us to be instruments of hope to those people in this world who might be struggling, who are despairing and don't know what else to do. Lord God, bless us, we pray, and use us as your servants. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. As we move on in our service, we're going to come and confess our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed, words that give us hope. If you're able to, please stand with me as we say together. I believe in God, God, the the Father Father Almighty, maker maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived conceived by the Holy Spirit, Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We come now to our time of prayer when we can come before the Lord God, bringing those things that we struggle with, knowing there is hope in him. So if you uh, want to please sit or kneel as we uh, pray together. And as we start a prayer, I'm going to ask Wade to bring forward our offerings. We give to our church in many different ways, whether it's through our gifts or our time, our talent, our energy. And we thank God for all that he's given us and the opportunity give back to him. Father God, thank you indeed for these gifts that you give us. Thank you for our lives, Lord God, that can be used as a gift for you. Pray that you may bless this and bless the work of our church and our church around our country and our world, bringing hope to those who need it. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. And Father God, as we continue to think about hope, Lord God, we can't but help when we look at our, our news to see a real struggle, Lord God, across our world. Where there's war and there's famine, where there's a lack of peace, Lord God, where there's a lack of hope. Lord God, we pray that at this Christmas time people may see the hope that is in you. And Lord God, as we see a new strain of COVID coming out, Father God, again, we pray for those who are in leadership positions to make the right decisions. And Lord God, we continue to pray for an end to this crisis. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We turn to pray for those people we know of who are sick or struggling at this time. On page 11 in our bulletin, there is a list of people in our church that we'll be praying for. But I'm going to give you a moment of quiet to lift up to the Lord those people on your hearts you know of who are struggling at the moment. Father God, as we pray for those people near and dear to us, Lord God, we also pray for those people in our church as well. Lord God, we pray for those who are shut-ins, those who are struggling to uh, get out and about. Father God, we lift up Eugene and Walter. Father God, we lift up to you Rudy. Bless him as he goes through his treatment, Lord, and give Shirley your strength. Lord God, we lift up to you Millie. Pray for Bob and Dolores. Pray for Mary. Father God, lift up to you Barney and Dorothy. Father God, we lift up to you our brother Aaron. Bless him and strengthen him as he goes through his treatment, Lord. Pray for Bev. Father God, continue to pray for your hand of healing upon Shirley. 
Strengthen Lil, Lord, and bless Bill. Father God, I pray for Julie and Bruce as their daughters just had COVID, COVID and so they isolate. Pray that you may protect them. Father God, I pray for Jeanette and fa- the family and, and friends of Jeanette, Lord God, who passed away uh, just recently. Comfort those who mourn, Lord. And Father God, we pray for a friend of Rosalind's who's also experiencing health issues. Father God, we lift up to you Bruce and Ashley. Father God, continue to be with Lil and Mary. Lil who's in hospice. And Lord God, may she know your presence with her. Thank you that they could gather together at Thanksgiving. Father, we continue to pray for your healing hand upon Katie. Lift up to you Joanne. Pray, Father God, for Kevin. Lord God, we pray for friends and family of Gwen's who are struggling as well. Have your hand upon them, Lord. Pray for John. Lift up to you, Susan and Paul. Father God, we pray for our first responders and healthcare workers, and we lift up to you, James, and others that we know. Lord God, we lift up to you, John, and also his fiancée, Patty, as they also struggle and recover from COVID. We lift up to you, Roxy, and Amy, pray for Warren. Lord God, we lift up to you, Ty, and Dale, and Amy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our, our Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive, forgive those who trespass, trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Come to a time of communion. If you didn't pick up a pack at the back, uh, please help yourself to one of those now. We come to share in Christ's body and Christ's blood. And we remember that meal that he shared with his disciples as they both reenacted a meal from the past, the Passover meal. But also as Christ was going to give them a future hope. Something to look to, to trust in, to hope for, which we continue today as we remember all that Christ has done on the cross and as we feed on him. And we receive for ourselves his forgiveness and his life and salvation. So on the night that he was betrayed, Jesus took bread. And he gave thanks to God and he said, Take and eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. (coughs) Towards the end of the supper, Jesus took the cup. Jesus, fully aware that he was going to spill his own blood on a cross for us. And Jesus said, drink this, all of you. This is the blood of the new covenant, shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of your sins. He said, do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Amen. I invite you to take up your pack. You receive Christ's body and his blood. Receive this bread. Broken for you. And receive the blood of Christ shed for the forgiveness of your sins. Father God, thank you for feeding us with the body and the blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord God, that through his sacrifice, we too can have hope. We can be strengthened. We can know forgiveness in you and life and salvation. Lord God, as Jesus sacrificed his life for us, send us out as living sacrifices, ready to spread that word (coughs) to those we come across. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
as we come to the end of our service, we're going to sing our final hymn, Go with children, Go My Children with My Blessing. If you're able to, please stand with me as we sing together. <laughs> Take your seats a moment. After our service, there will be snacks and uh, coffee. Thanks for Lane for doing that for us. So stick around if you've got time to do that. We thought in our service today about hope. And as we count down to Christmas with our Advent wreath, may each one of us know that hope that we can have in Jesus Christ. And may we also be bringers, bearers of hope to those that we come across today and this week. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine down upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you and those you love and pray for with favour and give you his peace. In the name of God the Father and God the Son and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you.